Alright guys, welcome back again to more of What Remains of Edith Finch. So we pretty much got done uh, watching Sam's story over here and it was pretty sad considering we ended up losing him over the fact that, you know, he and his daughter believed that they killed the deer. And unfortunately it was still, well, fortunately or unfortunately however you want to look at it, it was still alive and knocked off, <laughs> knocked the father off the cliff and you're like, oh no. Honestly, I saw it coming though. I was like, that thing is, if that thing's still alive, I bet you he's gonna get, something's gonna happen. And lo and behold, he got knocked off. And I'm like, that is just unfortunate. Oh, Gregory. Okay, Gregory, Don. Divorce papers. Uh oh. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. Oh, with the kid? I think he saw things the rest of us don't. Oh, that's cool. Jump frog. Leap on high, Gregory. Oh, neat. We can control the frog now. Woo! That's end over, Gregory. It's time to... Hold on, sweetie. Hello? Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I wonder what he saw. Oh. What his world was like. Let's get more party members. He reminded me so much of Calvin. Lost in his imagination. This is so cool. I love it. I know how silly it sounds. That I worried about a baby being too happy. But I could feel him slipping away. Oh no. Sorry about that, Gregory. I know you did everything you could. Maybe if I hadn't called that night. Damn it. Hold on, I don't want Gregory to hear this. Oh, we can still control him. I wish he could have told us. And the point continues. There's so much I don't understand about Gregory, about everything. Now with the frog, this kid's imagination is just amazing. But I know what happened wasn't your fault. Let's join our friends. Sure, he's happy. And he'd want you to be happy too. Good luck, Kay. Love, Sam. Wait. Wait. So. Am I to, to believe that when he turned the faucet back on and he dreamed he was a frog or fantasized about it? Wait, did that mean he drowned? No. No. Then again, his picture on the journal is still a baby, too. Oh, that's just no. Wow. 
gas. A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Oh, now this is interesting. What? My father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. Oh, man. You know, it's funny because when you actually fly a kite, you don't have this semblance of true control over it like you do on this controller, but it's still fun. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I, I now remember. pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Oh, uh -huh. are these the words? Oh, neat. More words. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign, held up his middle finger. <laughs> oh my gosh, why? The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Alright, so we're supposed to hit the words, so she speaks more poems, or more about the story. It started raining. They went inside the tent. Oh, more words. Uh-oh. The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. Oh, we are gathering everything. Let's go. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was, make the music louder. Of course. Are we supposed to go to the tent? Oh! I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone. Just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't. Until we found you. And this was she Gus. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. So Gus was from 1969 to 1982. This family has been going through nothing but tragedy after tragedy. <laughs> With sympathy. Deepest sympathy. Nothing but sympathies, huh? Oh. Rock climbing. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. <sighs> At the time, it was as far away as she could get. I think my favorite aspect of storytelling thus far is Barbara's with the comic book narration. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Sanjay, huh? Flight to India. After school teaching. Don Finch, what's the book here? 10 Ways to Teach Critical Thinking. Wow. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. <sighs> Lewis, huh? When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. 
I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. Milton, Lewis, Don? Edith, okay. Basil, Sage, Thyme, Mint. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good. Almost normal. Almost? Our family history, fact or fiction? But it didn't last. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. After Milton disappeared, the only thing he left behind was a room full of paintings. Well, more like one painting, spilled paint. So, we, do we ever find out what happened to him though? This is cool. Hold on. Hey, wait a second. Is this the from the game White Swan? It is, isn't it? That's pretty cool. Nice little cameo. Oh wait, we're supposed to climb up here, right? Yep, 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 yep. Milton, 92. Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. Oh, I'm liking this. This is a very interesting way to tell a story too. And this must have taken him a lot of time because this type of thing takes forever. I was four when Milton disappeared. 92 to 2003. At least in her journal, at least, because that's what it means, considering he just went missing. We don't know if he was killed, or if he died in general. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Hey, Milton would have been an animator then, huh? Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Okay, well, I guess going upward is next. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. Now we're talking about Lewis? After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room. Until Mom got him a job at the cannery. Everyone always told me to stay out of Lewis's room. Except Lewis. Psychedelic, huh? 1988 to 2010. Alright, I guess we're gonna start going into Lewis's room. Lewis's room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Wonderland Turbo. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. <laughs> well, not every, not everyone's great at video games, you know. This guy's room is pretty cool. 
Legalize marijuana. Ah. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. Oh, okay. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... Wait, what? Wander. Oh, two things at once. Uh-oh. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. Oh man, hold on. He uh. feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats. And toads. Why is toads highlighting green? Oh no, hold on. Ah. What is this? What is he seeing? And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I like how they're going through like... Like, kind of what's going on with someone that's, you know, taking drugs. And how it messes with the mind. Go, go in there. Go in there. I had hoped he'd find himself. And how, like, you're trying to concentrate on one thing, like reality, but you get distracted by the fantasy in your life. This is pretty unique, too. I really like this. Like the storytelling for each character is just wow, and it goes, it goes with their. You but know, he found something more. Wow, it goes with their character. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss, but he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. Oh. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. <laughs> I was celebrating him. And songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. Yeah, you can tell his fantasy's taking over his from reality. was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him. At all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished.
he held an election for mayor. And he won. <laughs> they begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. Oh man, look how much his, his fantasy took over. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Louisville. St. Louis. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Yeah, we're losing the cannery. It's more his fantasy now. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. Man, that's sad. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a Handsome queen. What happened to this area? The queen was on her own quest for... Sinister serpents. Sinister serpents. Oh. He followed the sound of her silver harp. Oh, my God, silver harp. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. Oh, we don't see the cannery anymore at all. He knew the world was all in his imagination. Oh, hey, 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 that's too many fishes. He was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. Is that how he looks? For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. Is that the my queen? imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. Wait, where are we now? The cannery again? Is this his locker? Imperial Palace. He began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. 
Ah, uh, so this is who I am, or Lewis. I still thought I could save him. In reality. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on advising him. His queen waited, holding his crown. There was only one thing left to do. Accept the crown. Whoa. Whoa. Is that guillotine? Bend down his head. Oh, no! The cannery! And the rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son, was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him. Holy cow. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. He was. I mean, it definitely shows, you know, what could happen with, with substance abusers. Like, with the whole... You know, you're preoccupied with many things in your mind. Like, you're doing one thing, but you're really doing something else. And, like, you don't know what's real anymore. Like, that is really poignant, you know? Like, holy cow. Alright, guys. Unfortunately, I'm out of time today. I'm going to have to end the video here. If anything, I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you all for watching.